So yeah, here at the uh, at the Evergreen Golf Course, I'm um, joined by um, new president Kevin Kevin Dukeshire, obviously a member of the the Golf Saskatchewan board, but a, a member here, obviously at the Evergreen, and I'm um, just um, you know, there's hidden gem is kind of a term used by golf for golf courses. Maybe Nipwin is a little bit of a hidden gem just because of where it is in a community of 4,000 people. But you know, tell us about the Evergreen, Kevin. I know it's close to your heart. Well. Uh... I moved up here to Nip One in 2008 and became a member here actually in 2013 and and uh, the course is absolutely immaculate every year. Uh, uh, it's an incredible track to play. It's one of those uh, one of those courses. There's some holes that are long enough that'll challenge a big hitter, and then uh, there's other holes on the course. There you have to be a little bit more precise and, and use your head a little bit with regards to. Uh, selecting what what club you're going to use and and where you're going to place a ball and, and that kind of stuff and and uh, it's it's one of those courses it rewards you it rewards you if you play well and it'll punish you if you don't so when people ask you about um, about Nippon, for one thing it's got 4,000 people and you can put this course up against um, you know the Elk Ridges or the Waska Sousa, the Kenoses and it was proven by the people of Saskatchewan in the drive the green pole when they went all the way all the way to the final but how proud is this community of what you guys have here? Oh absolutely uh, our membership here is uh, extremely proud of what we have um, we feel blessed every day uh, the opportunity to be able to play here um, we have a great superintendent in Ken Lintot He's been here for, uh, I believe, about 30 years now, and he uh, he does a fantastic job. His he's always got a good team out here working uh, along with him, and and uh, they do a fantastic job of keeping the, the course in as prime a shape as possible. Um, we have people coming up here in, in groups, even this year with COVID going on. Um, we've still had some some groups that have traveled from from uh, different places around the province that uh, have come up here as and wanted to play um, they've done a they've done a, uh, a fantastic job even under some of the conditions of keeping the course in good good shape this year and and we have people come back year after year after year after year and, and uh, th this is this is one of their big trips that they make as, as part of their golf seasons no, I know you know the course like the back of your hand just I mean you don't spend a lot of time on it but just kind of just you know walk us through quickly through the 18 holes. Well you start off start off real quick on the first hole challenging with uh, a long par 5 uh, mild dog leg to the right um, if you're playing from the tips it's pushing close to 600 yards um, you end up with a, a shorter par 4 with a mild dog leg left on 2 you got a short par 3 pretty straightforward uh, you follow it up with another long par five dog leg right on four. Uh, you got a short dog leg par five that uh, some of the big hitters will attempt to try to drive the green on. Um, six, which is probably one of our most toughest holes on the entire course. Um, uh, not a terribly long par four, but it's it narrows down to a very narrow green. And if you don't, if you're not precise on your second shot in, in particular, it it can turn. Uh, it can turn a good round into something not so great in a hurry. <laughs> Our seventh hole is a very short par four. Uh, it's protected with some some trees at the corner to uh, to uh, force some of the smaller hitters, shorter hitters, to to be uh, to be playing conservative. But those that want to gamble again, it's one of those holes that uh, you can go after it if you want. Um, eight, another par three. Nine, uh, straightaway par four. Front nine. Um, Although it can be tight in spots, feels pretty open. Uh, you get out on the back nine, uh, hole number 10, one of the most cursed holes probably <laughs> for amongst golfers in our province here. Uh, I know on Twitter, I was following on Twitter a couple months ago and they someone had posed the question, what is the toughest hole in Saskatchewan? And I would suggest probably 20% of the people that I saw respond said number 10 here at Evergreen. It's a full dog leg right that you have to be uh, hitting the right yardage off the tee and then hitting a good second shot in. Um, again, the green is fairly narrow at the front and so uh, it's protected with some with some valleys and, and small small little mogul hills on the right hand side of the green as well. So if they tuck the pin back right and you're short, uh, it's another one of those holes that uh, birdie changes to both bogey or double in a hurry. Um, 11 is one of our signature par threes. It's got a it's got an oddly shaped kidney kind of shaped green, with uh, the centerpiece being a, 
a small little valley of, of, uh, of rough. Um, 12 is a short par 5. That's uh, one that a lot of players like to play. It uh, starts narrow if you're in the chute at the back, but uh, uh, opens up quite wide as you get down the fairway. And it, some of the bigger hitters, it's quite an easy uh, hole to get to and two. Green is probably one of our toughest greens on the course. However, it's tiered and and it's it's uh, it's one of those uh, one of those greens that uh, you want to be in the right spot on it if you don't want a three putt. Um, Thirteen, another straightaway par three, a little longer. It's our longest par three in the course at about 180 yards or so from the tips. Followed by a par five, uh, mild dog leg right. That's it feels narrow. Uh, going through the trees, you're going through the pines, right through most of the hole. Uh, and again, the green gives an appearance of being closer than it really is. Lots of guys end up a club short hitting in on that one. Um, 15, we got a, it's another signature hole for us. We get lots of people who come out and take pictures off the tee on 15, looking down the fairway. It's, it's, uh, it's a picturesque hole. Uh, short par three though, um, or par four, excuse me. And, uh, Good, great place to start making birdies there in 16. 16 is a um, dog leg right, protected with some with some trees, but still drivable if a guy is willing to gamble. Uh, 17 is a dog leg left. I got a guy buddy here I golf with that uh, calls it the round the round killer. <laughs> um, yeah, if you uh, if you end up uh, too far left, too far right, uh, you're in you're in trouble there. And then finally on 18, we've got a we've got a, a long par four coming home. It's a it's a really good finishing hole. Um, the wind, the prevailing wind, lots of times is from the west or from the south, and so it's at 450 yards. It is a monster when the wind's in your face. Um, but uh, again, if they put the pin in the back corner, uh, which they will from time to time, <laughs> it's 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 easily. It's a par five, par six almost if you got a windy day. So um, it's it's a great track. It runs at about 6,500 yards from the tip, so it's not exceptionally long. But like I said, it's it it challenges all parts of your game. Okay. It's not just grip and rip. Yeah, it's home to the Scotia Wealth Championship, which is the only event in Saskatchewan that includes pros and amateurs. It's very popular. Unfortunately, COVID uh, you know it forced it to cancel this year. But you know, let's talk about that tournament and and what else you guys are doing this year with the you know with the restrictions. Because I know you guys still have some stuff going on as a club. Yeah, um, Dean Prosky's been running that tournament up here for years. He does a fantastic job. Um, we're really. Uh, quite proud again of the course and so we look forward to having those guys come up here it's early in the year when they come um, it's a it's a great way to kick off the season every year with regards to uh, comp, uh, competitive golf and and uh, you know I I've loved coming out here and watching the guys play and and uh, we get big names that come out uh, and play here and uh, it's really great golf and Dean does a good job of, of not only running the tournament but promoting it and, and getting the players to come out and play and lots of times I know Dean has waiting lists to try to get people into that tournament and, and uh, it's in my opinion it's one of the prime tournaments in the province. What else is going on as a as a club? You guys still continuing with the leagues and, and you know, still the weekly highlights? Well this this year has been a little different with COVID. Yeah. Um, we we traditionally used to run men's nights on Tuesday nights and women's nights on Wednesday nights, uh, and they were usually four four person scrambles types uh, of an event. It's very sociable, um, that type of stuff. And we had sponsors that were sponsoring the evenings and stuff like that. Um, with the with the government having the regulations in place, we weren't able to do that this year. And so I I sat down with a, a couple of others and said you know what can we do to try to bring in some revenue and bring some golfers in to to be able to to replace that we're never going to replace it completely but something that we can give people to do that will still follow the guidelines and so we attempted trying some leagues this year uh, the men's league runs on tuesday nights it's a it's a two-man um, better ball it's a it's a foursome um a four ball rather style um of, uh, of an event, we were running head-to-head -head matches uh, between 12 teams of two uh, over a 15-week season, if you will, um, round robin, and then some playoffs at the end. Um, we kept the entry fees small. 
and uh, and the goal was is we wanted to make sure we were supporting our club, so all of our all of our prizes are paid out and get certificates to our pro shop. Um, we attempted to try to get the ladies league going. Our ladies here just not not quite as competitive. They're much more social than competitive, and and so we weren't able to get the the signups that we wanted there. So Wednesday nights is still free, and a lot of ladies still come out and play, but they're they're booking their tea times and doing their own thing. And then uh, Sunday mornings we have a singles a singles match play league that we uh, actually use handicaps for, and. Uh, We've got a handful of players that are playing in that, and and uh, they play 18. The other tournaments during the week, are, are the other uh, uh, league games are are nine hole because they're in the evenings. Uh, the Sunday morning one is an 18 hole match play one, and again we're doing round robin and playoffs there, and they, it'll go through the summer. Great. So before we get out there and get to enjoy this beautiful track, to just you know we're sitting on the deck here, the spot restaurant. Um, yes. The Chris Seiferling owns it. Does a fantastic job. And you know I know you mentioned Derek right off the top, but it goes beyond the course, and it's just it's an experience that everyone should probably take in as we as we overlook the 18th green and the number number one fairway here. Absolutely. Um, the the regional park here has a has a has a role with regards to our course here too. And then uh, Corinne here at the at the spot. Um, fantastic restaurant um, really really good food they run the canteen downstairs when our golfers come through the turn at 9 and again when they finish at 18 um, uh, the, uh, the like I said the course itself is prime condition we got people coming all the time Derek has a, the pro shop stocked and um, uh, people are coming in and, and getting our, our clothing and stuff like that um, helping us with advertising around the province when they go home too and, and we do appreciate that um, it's just a it's a great place I love hanging out here as often as I can in the summer uh, both my kids work here um, my daughter works for Derek in the pro shop and he she also works for Corinne here at the spot uh, she she drives the beer cart she's <laughs> all over so uh, and my son just began working here this year in the back shop and uh, although he's he doesn't golf much he's really enjoying the work and and loving the job and so uh, um, you know for me and my family it's a this is a pretty important place for us so we enjoy our time here